If you have a heater for your swimming pool, it's very important that you watch this video. I'm going to give you three tips that are going to help to protect your heater from damage. There's actually some stuff that you can do to your heater that could happen pretty easily, and if you do it, you're almost certainly going to damage it. So let's talk about the first one of these situations, which is just adverse water chemistry. And you probably already know that you shouldn't have really bad water chemistry because it's not going to be good for anything, but it's specifically bad for your heater. And I want to get even more specific than this. There's two things in specific. One is low pH. Your range that you're supposed to be at is 7.2 to 7.8. When you get lower than 7.2, that's kind of a problem because the it's an exponential uh, scale. So it becomes a lot like the, a pH of 6 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of 7. So it kind of matters a lot. Like if you end up with a pH of 5, that's a 100 times more acidic than the water is supposed to be. And when you say it like that, it actually kind of sounds pretty bad. And it is. And the metals inside of a heater don't really do well in these really acidic environments. So really low pH is very bad and something you definitely want to avoid if you want your pool heater to last a long time. Another chemical situation that you want to avoid is high sanitizer levels, and that's your chlorine level. Periodically, pools need high sanitizer level for, you know, things like breaking down the combined chlorine uh, and some pools have a bypass for their heater, which allows you to take it offline. And the the point of that bypass, really, in most cases, is so that you can protect your heater from these high sanitizer levels. Ideally, it would be best to do that. If you're going to super chlorinate your pool, you take your pool heater offline for 12 or 24 hours, bring it back online once those sanitizer levels are back down to a more reasonable level. Not everyone has that option. So if you're super chlorinating and you don't take your heater offline, you are incrementally chipping away at the longevity that you're going to get out of the internal components of that heater. But even a single instance where you have very high sanitizer levels, and worst of all, very high sanitizer levels combined with low pH, a single event like that is enough to strip the metals inside of your heater and ruin your heater completely. A single event can, can cause that. So it's very important if you own a heater to understand that water chemistry is important and in specific, you never want to get your sanitizer levels too high, you never want to get your pH levels too low, and you certainly don't want to do both of those at the same time. Since we're talking about chlorine in heaters, this brings me to my second point. Something you never want to do is introduce chlorine into your swimming pool water before the heater, like upstream of the heater. And if you buy a chlorine erosion feeder or a salt chlorine generator cell or any device like this and read the instruction manual, it's going to tell you somewhere in there, don't install this before a heater. And the reason why is it's adding chlorine into the system. And it's like, you know, bleeding a small amount in there. But if you're putting it in right before the heater, that chlorine is still concentrated because you're adding enough to make a difference to the entire volume of your swimming pool. So the volume of the inside of a single section of pipe is not all that much. So even that tiny bleed of chlorine is certainly appreciable on the scale that it damages your heater. So never install an erosion feeder or salt cell upstream or before a pool heater. But further to that, don't put chlorine pucks into your pool skimmer basket. It is shockingly common how often people put chlorine pucks into their pool skimmer baskets. And there's even some products out there that claim, no, it's, it's totally cool. Our chlorine is special and you can put it into the skimmer baskets. Don't do that because you are introducing chlorine upstream of a heater, which we've already determined every chlorine erosion feeder on the market and salt chlorine generation cell on the market will tell you definitely don't put us upstream of a heater. So why would it be okay to put chlorine pucks of any description directly upstream of your heater and all of your other pool equipment as well? So in my professional opinion, just don't put chlorine anywhere before your heater. The chlorine should be introduced after the, after the heater specifically. So that brings me to my final point here that I want you to know. The third thing that I want you to know to protect your pool heater is you should have a spring cleaning service performed on your heater every year. 
And this is true whether you live in an area where you have a seasonal use of the pool or whether you have year-round use of the pool. At least once a year, you should have a pro coming out and just performing an inspection and more important, cleaning the, the heater. One of the main reasons why is that spiders are attracted to the smell of propane and natural gas and they will build spider webs inside of these tiny little uh, nozzles and orifices the the heater will still run that's the thing is you won't notice there's a problem it'll probably just keep going but incrementally it got worse because when you're dealing with a combustion like this you're talking about a fuel to air ratio a very specific fine-tuned mixture for efficiency you start playing with that ratio for any reason and you start dramatically affecting the efficiency and it starts to create soot and it starts to create this downward cycle of loss of efficiency and it's not good for your heater and certainly not good for your longevity and again it's something that you won't necessarily notice right away it'll three five years without a spring cleaning heater's probably still going to run but for a very small amount of money every year, you could have a pro come in and clean out all that junk out of there and kind of just, you know, have a professional set of eyeballs, look at your heater and make sure everything's still looking good. Considering how expensive these things are, to me, that seems like a wise investment, something I would recommend for the average pool owner who does have a pool heater. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.